playing over changes simply describes a soloist capability to sort of describe the chord progression they're playing over. By choosing notes that relate to the chords below, they can sort of tell the story of the chord progression, of the harmony below them. Now, depending on how advanced you want to get with this, this idea, playing over changes, can become a lifelong journey. But the core techniques that you use to build this skill are very easy to learn. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn how to play over changes. Now I said this was a lifelong journey, but I didn't mean that flippantly. In other words, I didn't mean like it's going to take you a lifetime to figure this out. Uh, let me describe my own experience to show you what I mean. I want to get good at this. I want to be better than I am at this. I know I'm better at playing over changes than I was a year ago, but I also see my heroes, the, the players that I admire, they're much better at this than I am. So it feels like I always have some room to grow, right? So it's, that's what I mean by a lifelong journey. I'm always going to be getting better at it. Hopefully that helps sort of, uh, you know, relieve some apprehension about learning to play over changes. And this video, I'm going to give you two very, very easy skills to start using to build this capability. And you'll see that once you have those skills, it actually becomes very, very easy. So I'm going to briefly explain, sort of summarize what playing over changes actually means. Then we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show you how to use these two techniques, very, very easy, to really start building the skill. Before we get started, if you're enjoying this channel, you like what I do, um, you appreciate the knowledge and the experience I bring, maybe you like the style with which I teach, and you're looking for a little bit more, it's through Patreon you can get access to my teaching platform called The Studio, and it's in the studio where I'm interacting with guitar players all the time. And you can also register for live classes that I'm teaching, which is me and a bunch of other guitar players live, diving into a specific subject. There's a classroom, there are assignments, it's very cool. If you like what I'm doing, you want some more, check out Patreon. And if you do decide to support the channel, thanks in advance. Okay, playing over changes is simply the idea of describing to the audience, the listener, whoever's listening to you play, could be your dog, could be Carnegie Hall, who knows, the harmony that's being played underneath me, that chord progression. Through the notes that I choose, I can, I can sort of define and and allow you to hear relationships that I'm after. So for example, if I'm playing over a G chord, if I play a G note, that note's related, right? There are other notes in a G chord, I could choose those and that would be related as well with a different sort of, you know, uh, harmonic, sonic personality. Um, and you can take that to the nth degree. You know, every note relates to G in some way, some ways are not very attractive, but if that's what you want to tell me as a soloist, that's uh, playing over changes as well. Okay, we're going to zoom in. I'm going to give you two simple, simple methods by which to start targeting and outlining these chords. Let me show you how to get started. Okay, no matter how sophisticated the chord progression, playing over changes is really just boils down to one thing. Can you outline the change? In other words, changing from one chord to another, can you nail that? Can you say something with your melodic lines that actually tells the story of that chord? The way I started and the, what I'm going to show you now is a couple of techniques that I'm using over a single chord change. Two major chords, G to F, and just isolating that one change and making sure that we can build a vocabulary of methods and ideas, just going to use two of them today, to absolutely nail that, that change. Um, so the chord progression I'm going to show you today is just G, there we go, it helps if you turn the guitar on, G, down to F, back to G. So here it is in the, in the looper. Just two chords, right? We're starting on G, F back to G, right? So all we really have to do is outline that change to the F, right? Just to make sure. The fabric we're going to use today is the G major pentatonic scale. That scale is going to work over this chord progression. See if I just sort of play the scale. It 
works, but it doesn't necessarily outline the change, right? Right? I can phrase all day long, but if I really don't do something conscious to outline the change, I'm just actually sort of running it over. Right? I'm just sort of like bullying through it and I'm just using the scale to sort of get me through. It sounds okay, but it doesn't actually outline the change. Here are the notes from the G major pentatonic scale. G, A, B, D, E. Then we're back to G. All those notes are G, A, B, D, and E. When this F chord comes around, here are the notes inside an F chord, F, A, and C. Right off the bat, you can see that that A note is common to the G major pentatonic scale as well as the F chord. So if I target that A note when the F chord comes around, that's gonna sound better, right? Even just cognitively, I can understand just looking at this, that it's going to sound good, right? Because that A note belongs inside the chord. And if I stop there, it's going to work. Let me give you an example. Here's our chord progression. I'm going to just play up the G major pentatonic scale and end on the A when the F chord comes around. Then I'm going back to G. G major. A note, resolving back to G. Let me just show you what that is. G major pentatonic. When the F chord comes around, I'm going to slide up to the A. Listen to that. Here's our A and the F note together. Sounds great together because A is inside this F chord. resolving back to the G because the chord progression changes back to G there. Listen to it again. One more time. Very simple technique. I just used the scale and I stopped on the note that's common to both things, the scale as well as the chord. Now I'm going to take it up an octave. I'm going to use this part of the scale, the second octave of the scale. Do the same exact thing. Play up the scale, end on the A note. Here it is. Sounds pretty sweet. Let me show you what's going on there. It's just the G major pentatonic scale again, ending on that A note, you can see it inside that F chord, but now I'm ending on this. So what is that? This is the note inside the G chord, it happens to be B. Look at all these notes. There's all the notes from the A from the G major pentatonic scale and all the notes from the F chord and that A which is common. Like there's a lot of cognitive load here. If you don't know all this stuff, that's okay. I'm assuming you play the chords, right? We got G and we got F, right? And we're using this G major pentatonic scale. Now, let's say I can play the scale but I don't know the notes in it. I just know it as a pattern. Right? All this information, I just don't have it, right? I just, I haven't spent the time to get that cognitive information sort of cemented in my brain. Meanwhile, it's a good idea to do that, but I don't have it. Let's just say I don't have it. I don't know these notes. But when I see this F chord, if I just take the time to look at the scale, that A note, that note inside the F chord is the second note in the scale. I can just use my visual capability of looking at the notes and seeing it inside the scale. In other words, I'm going to play this scale and I'm going to hit this note, but I'm going to see this, right? I'm hitting this, but I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this note inside this shape, 
-hmm. right? So if you don't have all this sort of, um, you know, mental acuity, you don't have all the notes from all the scales and all the chords, that's okay. Use, you can rely on your visual acuity to see the note inside the scale, right? That's another way of doing it. Okay, so that's basically one of the ideas. We're using that pentatonic scale, finding the common note in that chord and targeting it when the chord changes. Okay, now we're gonna um, wipe that out and we're gonna go with just basic triads. Triads are basically the smallest form of chord. These two chords, the G and the F chord, are both triads. This is G, here's F. We're just gonna use the triads, just the smallest version of those chords, to outline the change. And we're gonna just use them as arpeggios instead of chords. In other words, I'm using this G, I'm gonna use this F, I'm going to use this G to end on, but instead of playing them as chords, I'm going to play them as arpeggios, okay? So that means I'm going to play them one note at a time. So that's the line. Listen to what that sounds like over our chord change. It's going to be perfect because we're using the actual notes from inside the chords. It doesn't get any sweeter than that because you're actually playing the notes that are inside the chord. So there's no way you can play a wrong note here. Right? This is G, F, and G. Now, if you don't have triadic capability like this, you don't know all the triads, you really should. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's incredible how powerful understanding how triads lay out on the neck is. You can just see stuff easier. It's just, I can't recommend it enough. Um, let's do another triad example. Okay, we're gonna use this G triad, this F triad, and this G. So here are those chords. But I'm gonna use them as arpeggios. I'm gonna play one note at a time. more time. Change it up a little bit there. Let me do it again. Let me analyze and show you what I'm doing there. I'm playing the G chord, then moving to the F, doing a little string skipping there to make it interesting. And then when I go back to the G, doing the same little string skipping thing just so it's got some you know melodic bounce to it check it out one more time with the track it doesn't get any sweeter than that because I'm playing the actual notes that are inside the chord right I am outlining the changes perfectly Right? So we've got two different techniques. We're going to use that pentatonic scale and try to find that common tone when the chord changes. And then we're going to use triads, arpeggios, to just blatantly spell out the changes. If you drill these two ideas and just get these ideas and these techniques under your fingers with a simple two chord progression, drill it, drill it, drill it, you'll start to be able to use that technique over much more complex chord progressions. Okay, playing over changes. It's going to take me a lifetime to get where I want to, and I'm always going to be striving for something better, right? But these two techniques, if you're just getting started, if you're just trying to figure out how to make this happen, hopefully these two techniques, that pentatonic scale, finding those common tones, either by using the notes in the chord or just using, you know, the visuals, you can see the scale and you can see the chord, which notes actually can I play here that outline that chord, and then using those triads. That's really where the magic begins. If you don't have really good triadic capability, I would sort of urge and almost beg you, all guitar players should have a decent amount of triadic capability because it just gets you in line with how the fretboard's built and it, it serves as a great scaffolding to attach new information. But anyway, those two ideas, 
pentatonic scale, look for those common tones, and these triads, using them as arpeggios to absolutely nail what those chord tones are. They're the best way to get started. And all you have to do now is get a chord progression into a looper pedal, find a backing track you know, that has the chord progression, and start to work on outlining those changes with your melodic structures, right? How do I land on that F sharp chord? Or what's that note in the A minor chord that I really wanna nail? Okay, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you next time.